okay, back up, back up, back up. He just can't hit us. One paralysis and we're dead. He resisted. He didn't resist, but he was staggered. And three shot kill. Three shot kill. This is ridiculous. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Balmora channel. It's kind of like the travel channel, but a lot more ash, uh, pointy objects, and death. So pretty much all the amazing things about television rolled into one, except it's, well, it's Morrowind. So first, we have an absolute ripper of an artifact, one of my own personal favorites, uh, just from sheer power and uniqueness. And we'll be showing you how to get it and telling you a couple cool things along the way. So let's first begin by heading into the Balmora Guild of Mages and head downstairs to speak to Maureen Drin, our good friend over here. I hope I got your name right. Probably butchered it like I do every other name in this game, but that's not important because we need to click spells and then we need to hover down to water walking because today our quest takes us to the land of Tel Fear, an island off the coast that has no way to get to it by fast travel. So you are going to have to either levitate, water walk, or swift swim your way over there because actually doing it all natural without any alteration spells on you is going to be a little bit tedious when you think about all the slaughter fishes and dro involved in that kind of adventure. But since we now have water walking, well, we can make it over there quite easily. So let's head down to travel, head over to Sadrith Mora, which is going to be the closest that we can get with fast travel before heading to Tel Fear. And then once we are down here, let's go ahead and make our way outside. Let's head all the way to the bottom of this staircase here, and you will see the wooden arch door to Wolverine Hall which puts us at this very convenient uh, dock. I mean, I don't, I don't really know what they're using this for. But once we are down here, let's go ahead, turn to face this rock, and then open our map, because we actually want to head to this island here, which will house Tel Fear. Again, there's no good way to get there aside from water walking or levitating. So this is the best that we can do. So let's go ahead, get our water walking on. There we go. And then now let's go ahead while we are in route to Telfir and let's let's share a little bit of lore about the Daedric Crescent as it does, believe it or not, have some interesting history behind it. Now, first, the Daedric Crescent first appears in the game Battlespire and was used by the forces assaulting the Battlespire as weapons. Despite this, it never actually appears as a model in the game and instead only appears as a image on a loading screen, main menu and UI. So shout out to Bethesda just for calling back to a random weapon. It wasn't even in the game, but they brought it back for Morrowind, so that's pretty dang cool. But that isn't the only interesting thing about the Daedric Crescent, because after the battle at the Battle Spire, when the Empire won the invasion, they rounded up all the Daedric Crescents that had been left behind when they slaughtered them in the masses. Well, they actually destroyed every Daedric Crescent that made it onto Tamriel, or so they thought because one Daedric Crescent escaped, and ladies and gentlemen, I think you can guess where it ended up. So here we are now at Tel Fear, a nice red herring of a boat that doesn't actually fast travel you anywhere, laughing at you as you just walked all the way from freaking Sadrith Mora. That's a damn dirty trick, Diviath. That boat's probably an illusion. That, that or he only, he has a henchman that just ferries him around and the guy's just invisible or something. I don't know. That sounds like something Diviath would do. The, the man is only slightly unhinged. But now that we are at Tel Fear, let's go ahead, head inside to the Onyx Hall. And then we just want to make our way upstairs to that man we mentioned before, old Diviath Fear. And fear not, haha, pun intended, if you do not have a levitation spell, because if you walk into the room over here on our left, you will see two standard rising force potions, which are perfect because that is exactly the amount of times we will need to get up and down here. So let's go ahead and pop a potion, fly on up here. And then once you're at the top level, we will want to go to the room with Mr. Diviath himself. And then there are a couple of ways you can actually get the Daedric Crescent. Now, the first, if you have a 100 point open spell on you, well, you can look at this chest right here, the small ornate lockbox, and just pop the lock yourself and help yourself to the next item you will find. But we're not gonna do that today. Today, we're gonna show the old fashioned way because I looked around on YouTube 
and none of the videos actually showed how to get it normally. So I, I want to go ahead and fill that gap. So what we're going to do is look behind Diviath and over here you will see Diviath's 637th key. Let's go ahead and grab that and then we need to head back down into the Corpusarium. Because if you talk to Diviath and his fellow henchmen uh, in here, they will mention that they will allow you to plunder the dungeon should you prove yourself worthy enough to do so. And the only thing that they ask is that you not harm any of the corpus victims, uh, ailers, I, I don't know, really call them monsters. Just, just don't hurt any of the corpus creatures, okay, <laughs> once you're in the corpusarium. But as long as you do that, well, you are welcome to loot this place to your heart's content, which we will do because each chest that we unlock, starting with the 637th key, is going to give us another key and another key and another key, eventually leading us back up to that small ornate lockbox. So let's go ahead, open the old gate here in the Corpusarium, and then we want to hang a left. And oh, here we go. Okay, just remember, we, we cannot attack these people. So you need to employ... Ooh, some speedrun tactics, <laughs> boots of blinding speed, something to make you a little more evasive because if you attack any of these corpus creatures at any point, well, then everybody in Telfir will aggro you and try to kill you. And we want to avoid that because Divyeth is pretty strong. But here we are, our first chest, the Heavy Dwemer chest. Click it open, and here we will find key 678. So let's add that one to the inventory, and then let's head back over here. Avoiding Frankenstein. Okay, so far so good. I'll take it. The good thing about all the corpus creatures is that even though they're not technically zombies, they're basically zombies <laughs> in the sense that they move incredibly slow and are really, really easy to get around. I mean, those things move slower than my geriatric grandma. I mean, come on. Grandma's running laps around the lame corpus. I guess that's why he's lame. I mean, just look at that. that, that that's not first round draft pick, okay? But our second chest... Let's hop down here, ornate dormer chest again, and inside, well, you will find the 738th key. All right, let's add that one back in. Now we want to head up, avoiding the, the lame-o corpus over there. <laughs> Not getting picked and pick up basketball. Let's open that gate. We need to lead these guys out of our way. Okay, took a little damage there. But we need to lead him into this room so that we can get into that room over there. So I'll just lead him over to this skeleton. Well, that guy, he, he must not have listened to the don't attack any of the corpus people. I bet Divioth killed him and just threw his damn body down here. <laughs> that sounds like something Divioth would do. But once we're in the room, let's go ahead. Another chest. Boom. 800 and second keys. You can see we're moving up the rungs here. All right. We went from 600 to 800 and we will continue going. Oh. God, where'd that third guy come from? Okay. Come on. Come on in here. I'm like the Pied Piper. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why that's where my mind went, but, you know, he led things around. Rats, zombies, uh, same difference. But once we've exited that room, we need to go to where we originally were. So here is that central hallway. That leads to the bowels of the Corpus Arum. We don't want to go there quite yet. Instead, we want to make our way to the left path here. Again, there's our friends down the hallway over there. And as we continue down left, there was that original chest that we opened. We want to avoid it, make our way around this lame corpus here, hop our way over to another heavy Dwemer chest, pop it open, and ladies and gentlemen, 897th key, okay? We're almost to 1,000, which is the number that we are shooting for. So let's head back this way. And we are almost done here. Don't worry. There we go. Let's head back down this hall. I know we aggroed the whole freaking gang there. They're probably waiting for us. Yep, there they are. Uh, okay. Uh, hold on. Let me pump up the Jordans. Pump up the Jordans. All right. Let's, uh, let's be evasive here. Speed run. Speed run days. Okay, there we go. Thank God. All right. <laughs> I used to speedrun back in the day, uh, not not really Morrow into that seriously, but other games, so I have a little skills tucked back in there somewhere. But now we're back in Onyx Hall here at the bottom. Let's hang a right, and then boom, here we have our next chest, another ornate chest. Click it open, and there we are, 1008th key, and now we are one away from the one that we actually need, so let's throw in the thousandth. 
I'm glad there's not a thousand chests. I mean, that, that would be a lot, okay? There's already enough. Thousand would be a little extra, but totally in line with Divyeth. Uh, but the thousands key actually serves two purposes. One is the next chest, and the other is the golden door. So, bam, pop that open. And there you go. You now have access to Delina Mandas, who is tied to a quest for House Raideran. So good to know if you have any warrior intentions about you. But, oh, damn it, the welcoming party. Come on, guys. Don't let me, let me off easy, guys. Come on, Argonian, help me. I, I know you're their caretaker, but uh, play him a song or something. Make him, make him relax, okay? Uh, okay, run, 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 run. Run. Uh, okay. All right, we're free. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Call me Muhammad Ali. That's a terrible rhyme, but here we are. Corpusarium bowels for the final chest. Let's hop in. And luckily, it is not far from the open. So let's, again, avoid our lame corpus ogre demon zombie thing that makes my grandma look like a D1 athlete. And here we are. Heavy Dwemer chest. Pop it open, and you'll find Divius 1092nd key, which is the final key we need to get us the item that we have been searching for, the mighty Daedric Crescent. So let's head back up to Divioth and get prepared for the fight of our lives. You'll find out why in just a second. But pop back to the Corpusarium. Juke, juke, juke. <laughs> Jive, come on, juke. Oh, look at that. I am XFL ready. AFL, XFL. There's too many damn XFLs. I wouldn't give myself an NFL. My character has like a speed of 50. So, hey, but the XFL, I heard the bar's pretty low. Maybe I can, maybe we can pull that one off. I'm pretty tight with Mr. Mr. Dwayne Johnson. I, I'll, I'll do his Marwin build or something if he, uh, if, as long as he lets me on one of his teams. <laughs> but here we go. The Hall of Fear once again. And let's pop that potion. Fly on up to Divius. Where are you, Divius? My darling. That was a little weird. I don't think he would appreciate that. He'd probably just kill me. <laughs> All right, but here we are. Dibieth, I've plundered your dungeons. Now I'm here for your small ornate lockbox using your thousand and ninety second key. Open that up, and inside you will see the Daedric Sanctuary Amulet, as well as a 1155th key, which actually leads to another artifact I'll probably make a video on in the future. Spoiler alert, but you may just want to take that too. But let's take the amulet because that's what we're actually here for. And then now we need to prepare for the fight of our life. Now, remember how I said that the Daedric Crescent was linked to the forces that fought at the Battle Spire for Mehrunes Dagon? Well, there was a certain general that was uh, part of those battles, actually serving Malag Ball. Not sure how Mehrunes and Malag crossed forces there, but hey. I didn't write the lore. Well, that general was known as Dragas Valar, and you actually defeat him in ESO while he's defending some of the Dark Anchors, and he also then goes and loses the Battle of the Battle Spire. So not a great general, but he has locked himself away in a special Daedric tomb slightly beyond the realms of existence known as Magas Valar. You can only get there via teleporting with this amulet. Which sure sounds like a prison to me, but there's no actual lore to back that up. But to me, the guy's exiled, and we're about to go make his day a whole lot worse. So open your inventory, grab the Daedric Sanctuary Amulet, and let's go make this guy again regret ever existing. So I'm going to pop the amulet on. You will then see, would you like to travel to Magus Valar? And before you hit yes, just know... Like I said, this guy is incredibly strong, mainly because of the Daedric Crescent's ability to paralyze. So if you're a high level character, probably shouldn't have too much of a problem as long as you have some resist magic. But if you're a low level character, you're going to want to do what I'm going to do here. And that is exploit Sujama. Because there's not really another great way to get around this guy unless you have like the Atronox sign and can just avoid those paralysis. Instead, you just want to kill him as absolutely quick as possible because he will annihilate you otherwise. Now with that in mind, let's go ahead, click travel, and here we are. Now I'm going to first put on my Ancestor Guardian. I do not want to get hit as a single hit from the Crescent is essentially sudden death because of the paralysis. Then I'm going to come Grab 30 Sujama, and if you've never used Sujama exploit before, which I actually have not ever shown on my channel, it essentially boosts your strength 
into the stratosphere while ruining your intelligence. But who needs to be intelligent when you can just two shot and one shot everything? That's what I say. So let's grab our sword and then hope this goes well. We just need to get lucky and essentially hit him one or two times before he hits us with the crescent. Okay, back up, back up, back up. He just can't hit us. One paralysis and we're dead. Come on. Boom. Okay, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> you have defeated the Lord Dragas Valar. The Daedric amulet that brought you to this place disappears from your inventory, but is replaced by Valar's own weapon. You now wield the Crescent Blade. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are now the proud owners of the Daedric Crescent, which is amazing because this weapon is absolutely broken, like you will see right now. Well, let's hover over here. And we will see the Daedric Crescent, a two-handed long blade that has chop 15 to 40, slash 20 to 50, thrust 5 to 15, with a value of 180,000 gold and cast wind strikes, disintegrate armor, 5 to 30 points for one second on touch, and the absolutely broken paralyze for 10 seconds on touch. I cannot stress to you how insane this item is with that paralyze. As long as you are not fighting an enemy that has resistance or absorb magicka, like this is an absolute game changer. You immediately win every single one-on-one -on -one because you just stun lock them. You have to land one hit every 10 seconds. Pretty much any build can do that. <laughs> but let's pop it on here, give it a look, and I guess it looks kind of long bladey, you know, when you, when you, back up i don't know what else it would be it's certainly not a spear but crescent claymore not exactly the same thing in my head but fair enough now like i've mentioned since the beginning here this weapon is absolutely broken and to make that point very clear let's hop over to the vivek arena and give you a little showcase on what this thing can do ladies and gentlemen here we have shuring hardheart grandmaster of the fighters guild versus one random level four player who just happened to have a lot of Sujama and stole a Daedric artifact. Who will win? Well, I know where my money's at. So let's get after it here. Suring, let's see what you can do. One shot, paralyzed. I think you know how this is gonna go. Boom. <laughs> yep. Yeah, okay, yep, there. <laughs> There you go, ladies and gentlemen, this thing's ridiculous. If you're fighting anyone one-on-one, -on -one, it's it's already over. Shoring is a level 23 guild master of the fighter's guild, but you know, Shoring didn't have any fancy armor. Let, let's try something a little bit more difficult. How about that? Now, Shoring went down pretty easily, but now let's try someone else known for their warrior prowess, the archmaster of House Raideran, Bolvin Venom. Bolvin, let's see what you got. Not a lot, apparently. <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, this is how every one-on-one -on -one fight goes with the Daedric Crescent. It is absolutely insane. This is the Archmaster of House Raideran. All right, this guy even has the ability to resist some magic. And here he goes. Oh. Doesn't even... It gets two shots in and, well, yeah, the rest is history. This thing is insane. Okay, this thing's insane. And he has a nice Daedric Daikatana. Let's take that. I mean, not that we're going to use it now that we have the Crescent, but still a badass weapon. All right, so we did the Fighter's Guild. We did House Raid Rand, but those are just normal, boring, sword and board warriors. Okay, what about the mages? And that's why I figured we'd invite old Trebonius Artorius out here just to see, you know, if this Daedric Crescent thing really is as powerful as we all think it is. So, Trebonius... Hope you got that will in place, cuz, uh, well, based on the other evidence, you're probably gonna need it. Three, two, one. He resisted? He didn't resist, but he was staggered? And three shot kill. Three shot kill. Okay, jeez. I, I mean, there you go. That's all the evidence you need. Three shot kill. We have a strength of 57. This is ridiculous. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's about all you need to see. Go get the Daedric Crescent. It is absolutely insane and take down every one-to-one -one fight that you pretty much will have to worry about, at least in the base game of Marwind. That's going to do it for me here. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to stop by my Twitch channel and my second channel here on YouTube. And as always, I will catch you on the next one.